Hello, and thank you for joining the webinar, Introducing Next Generation Artificial Intelligence for Image Analytics. I'm Kim Sirico, and I'll be your moderator for today's webinar. Please feel free to enter your questions in the Q&A widget at the bottom of your screen. We'll be happy to answer your questions at the end of the webinar. We will be emailing a link of the recording and a PDF of the slide deck from this webinar to you later on today. Um, please feel free to hashtag NetBaseWebinar on Twitter. We'd be more than happy to uh, join you on Twitter as well. Go ahead and introduce our presenters for today's webinar. The first presenter is Ranjit Pia. Ranjit is a VP of product for NetBase and is responsible for the product management for the various products at NetBase. He has been with the company for nine years and has been instrumental in developing the product from the very beginning. We also have Elvis Liban, Director of Social Media Insights here at NetBase. Elvis conducts research on trending topics, industries, and best practices across social media. He has a background in content marketing, growth marketing, branding, and social media management. Now I'll pass it over to Elvis. Elvis? Thanks so much, Kim. I'm really excited to be here today with Ranjit uh, to talk to all of you about all of the great work that we've been doing with Image Analytics and how that can inform your business decisions and provide a new type of data um, to help give you a more holistic picture of your audience and what they're talking about online. Um, I wanted to give you a few signposts to go over what we're talking about today. Um, we have a lot of new people on this webinar who might not be familiar with NetBase, so I'm going to run through a few quick slides uh, for those who don't know so you can learn more about who we are, what we do, and why we do it. Um, then I'm going to talk about image analytics uh, and why you need it if you're not using it today. Um, and then we'll dive a little bit into our solution, uh, talk about our technology, uh, some of the use cases uh, that we've been working with some of the biggest brands in the world on. Um, and then we'll give you a quick product demo uh, to show you how it works in action. And uh, we'll leave time at the end for a Q&A. Uh, really happy to, to answer your questions. All right. So NetBase is really about providing quality social data that helps accelerate your business. Uh, today we live in the age of the customer. And in order to accelerate your business, your team needs to be agile to meet changing customer needs. Uh, I think this is something that we see play out every week. Um, customers online has, you know, sort of an, an unprecedented amount of pull and they're sharing more than ever before. And we see this, you know, if you're, if you're an advertiser on a show and don't want to get political here and your audience isn't in favor of that, they're going to let you know. So this is a real give and take with, with your customers telling your business what they think about um, what you're doing in real time. And that's really sort of the vision of NetBase, is to provide broad customer experience analytics that inform every aspect of your business. And that includes social media, which is traditionally what we focus on, survey customer data, also known as voice of the customer data, and of course, what we're talking about today, image data. With so many customers sharing online, uh, whether that's in text, whether that's in photos or memes, uh, you need to know what's what people are saying, you need to have your finger on the pulse. And that's really our vision for NetBase, is to provide a platform uh, that keeps your finger on the pulse of customer conversation. Um, so we do that. We help you find out what and find out why. Uh, so things the NetBase platform looks into, we can help you track share of buzz. Uh, we can help you track sentiment, net sentiment, uh, and go further beyond that to passion. Uh, so even love or hate you know, because there are different shades of sentiment and passion. We can look at all of these things over time, and most importantly, we help you track that versus your competition, because uh, it's always really important to understand not only how your brand is doing and what people are saying about your brand, but what they're saying about the competition, maybe the market or a category in general. Uh, beyond the what, we also help you find out why. Um, we help you answer questions about the customer's experience by helping you track things like the customer life cycle or the customer buying cycle. Um, we can help you find opinions and emotions 
that lie, you know, behind just the sentiment and the buzz, like what are the emotions that people are using, what opinions are they expressing, what behaviors are contained in those posts, and the, those are really important things to go even deeper and go beyond just the what and start to uncover some of those deeper insights. Um, so some of the ways that we do that, um, you know, depending on what part of the business you're in, if you're in PR and communications, we can help you track your brand and your competitors, uh, specific issues, can help you manage issue response or track a category, depending on what category your business is in. If you're in brand management and strategy, we help you with brand and competitive tracking. Of course, that's important, uh, but we can go deeper into category analysis with voice of the customer data. We can help you with product attribute analysis and audience segmentation. So these are sort of different layers of analysis that we can get you to. If you're a digital marketer, we can help you track campaigns. You can track events in real time. If you want to monitor product launches, um, we can do all of this for you. Uh, sales, retail, and e-commerce, as I mentioned earlier, customer journey, website experience. And of course, we have use cases in customer care and even advanced use cases in research and development and M&A and uh, white space discovery. Now, all of that sounds really great, um, but this is something we're actually delivering. Uh, it's important you know, for, for you to see that we're driving these results. So um, these are some of our, our examples. Uh, Taco Bell extended campaign reach for a specific campaign by 4X by better understanding their audience and how to bring the right message to the right people uh, using NetBase. Um, T-Mobile has really revolutionized their customer care using social listening. Uh, they're handling four times the number of cases they did uh, before and have improved customer satisfaction and they can put actual metrics against that and we help them do that. Um, operations. You know, we help quick serve chains increase sales. We help them stay on top of customer reviews and other buzz, not just on social, but from other data sources as well. Um, and we've helped UMG increase sales by 20%. And again, that, that's just looking deep into an audience and what they care about and making sure you're getting the right people with the right message at the right time. And that's why you need image analytics. And at NetBase, we will get into some of the technology that we use, uh, but first let's go over at a high level sort of, sort of what you're missing if you're not listening to images. So images are the language of social. I think a lot of us are probably pretty familiar with some of these statistics that over 3 billion images are added to social media every day that over 80% of social posts include an image, and that image content is 40 times more likely to be shared than text content. Um, it's just really important to keep this in perspective with your brand. If you're a digital marketer or have a background in digital marketing like I do, you know, this is something that you kind of take as gospel, right, is posts mm -hmm. with images are definitely going to get a lot more interaction on social. There's going to be a lot more engagement. People are going to pay more attention. Um, and that's really important, not just, you know, for, for digital marketers, but when customers are sharing an experience or an image from an event or from their lives or about your product, that means that that image a customer shared is going to get a lot more attention than maybe uh, something said via text. So it's really important to understand what images they're sharing and what sort of the context around that image is. Um, so without image analytics, you're actually not seeing the whole picture. Uh, brands aren't always mentioned and tagged in social posts. Uh, some of the statistics I've seen say that could be up to 80%. At NetBase and our research, I've found that, that that's probably exaggerated for most brands. Um, we've found that probably about 20% or 20.6% uh, due to our research doing this for clients uh, posts don't have the brand associated with the image. So if you're not looking at image analytics um, and you're not using this capability, you're missing out on a significant portion of conversation. Uh, so for this example here, um, we have a tweet from Formula One um, talking about the three drivers approaching the podiums club. 
Um, but you see there are a number of sponsors here that aren't tagged or mentioned via text in this post. And this is something that we see fairly common, is fairly common. Um, a lot of people are sharing images and they're not going through and tagging everything or making sure that they mention every brand. Um, so if you're Formula One or if you're one of its sponsors and you want to know what people are saying about your brand or what imagery or, or sentiment is directed towards your brand, uh, if you're not using image analytics, then you're missing important mentions. So I wanted to dive a little deeper into that. Um, so not only are you missing mentions, but the, your worldview, if you're just looking at, at text analytics, can be a little skewed. Um, so we did a deep dive onto a major international beverage brand. Um, and when we were looking at conversation around the globe, uh, without images, we found that you know, nearly 40% of that conversation was happening in the United States. Um, which isn't surprising, it's a large market for this brand. Um, but when we added uh, images into the research, we found a shift away from the United States. So 11% of that conversation, uh, there was an 11% decrease in conversation in the U.S. when taking images into account. Uh, so what this means is that, you know, if you're not looking at images, you're going to get potentially a skewed worldview to where people are sharing via text. And when you add images in and you get those 20% additional mentions, the sort of view of the world is going to change. And in this case, the majority of that 11% of mentions went to the EU and South Africa. So if you're a marketer and you're just looking at, at text, you might choose to focus on different markets than if you had image analytics giving you a more holistic picture of that conversation. Um, we found that's also true when it comes to uh, gender in your audience. Um, so this is an example from another beverage company um, in a different space. Um, and sort of on average, what we see is a meaningful increase in female conversations when including image data in the analysis. Uh, so in this case, we looked at this topic uh, for this brand, which is just a generic brand topic, and we wanted to get an idea of what their audience is. And so we saw it was 59% female to 41% male, so almost even in split. But when we added images in and wanted to get you know, that better picture of the brand, including those image posts without brand mentions, we found that the audience changed significantly, going to 72% female and 28% male. Uh, so this is going to change how you target ads. This is going to change how you think about content. Um, and, you know, this is sort of an extreme case. We don't, we don't see this extreme shift in most brands, but it really goes to kind of show you that if you're not thinking about image analytics and you're not incorporating images into your analysis, you're probably missing out on some really important insights for your brand that are going to directly impact how you market that brand to customers. Um, so that's sort of the background. Um, that's why you need image analytics. At this point, I want to turn it over to Ranjit, uh, who's really excited to share with you sort of an under the, under the hood look and understanding of the technology behind this, and then we'll give you some practical demonstration. All right, so uh, thank you, Elvis. So what I'm going to do is just kind of give you a little bit, as Elvis said, like under the hood, what's the technology, what we are using, kind of how, what are we using it for, and how some of our uh, users are actually making use of that. I'll give some real examples and then kind of end with, with a demo. So on the technology, I don't want to go really deep into it. Uh, I mean, we could spend like many hours just talking about that otherwise. So what, what I'm going to talk about is, the key thing is that we, we think it's going to be an important piece of technology. So very similar to how we kind of own uh, the, the whole technology stack when it comes to text processing, the same way we think it's important that we own the technology on the image analytics, because this is, we think there is, there is, uh, this is going to become more and more important going forward. So what we have done is, we have extended our data science team. We got our own computational scientists on board, which are actually developing our own uh, in-house 
within that base, they're extending that platform to actually have that uh, image analytics technology. So unlike I mean, our competitors, we are actually not using a third party here. And the whole 100% of the evolution is owned by NetBase. And it's important, what we want to do is that we want to fine tune it for the social domain. So this whole computational vision technology, it's a pretty general purpose technology that, I mean, it's being used across, uh, I would say, like from self-driving cars to, uh, to many other applications. So what we want to do is apply that to social domain. So if, if you're kind of licensing it from a third party, that's not something uh, they can do because they're going to apply it to many other areas, which may not be tied to social. Um, and the other important thing is we can evolve it based on our users' feedback and their needs. We have seen it, and we'll talk about that a little bit. Uh, and one example I want to give where why the social domain is actually important. So we, our data science team did some tests on uh, Google NLP, right? It's there. People can use it. They have APIs. Uh, so we just wanted to test it. How does it look if we just give it some tweets and Instagram posts? And believe it not, even with Google's, like, the whole uh, really advanced NLP technology, just because they don't fine-tune it for the social domain, our precision and coverage was roughly 2x of what they had. So we expect the same thing, that because we're going to be focused on the social, uh, that's why I want kind of want to highlight this point, that owning this technology, fine-tuning it for our own use cases is really important, and that's the decision we have taken here. Then on the other important piece is once you have the technology, uh, we, we want it to be fully integrated, the solution. So that means that uh, the platform, I mean, you don't need to jump between applications, right? It's part of an additional insights right stack with the, all the other insights you're getting, already getting from the text, from uh, the, uh, the metadata that's coming through. So we want to allow you to layer your analysis, right, whether you want to combine it with keywords, with geo, with channels, all in one place. And then use the same ways that you look at, like whether through dashboards, instant search, pro, live reports, pulses. So all of that and any new analysis that we actually come up with, you should be able to leverage that. So that's, I think, the, 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 the key here is we – we want to own the technology. We want to fully integrate it because we see a lot of value that our users can get. And going forward, we can fine tune where the needs of our users are. So with that, just, I mean, I'll give you a quick overview of what this technology is. And you're going to see the same thing uh, from many other uh, places because, as I mentioned, uh, the underlying technology is pretty uh, general, that everybody else is kind of using the state of the art. So we also use what's called the convolution neural networks or connets or CNNs. And this is kind of a category of neural networks. So this is neural networks are, uh, is, is kind of the, currently the state of the art. Uh, well, it's also called the deep learning. And it's very effective in areas such as image recognition and text classification and uh, speech processing. And it's vaguely kind of inspired by the visual cortex, right? So what, the way it works is it kind of looks at various smaller pieces uh, of the picture and scans it kind of the, the various sections to try the different pieces, and then it has multiple layers that tries to make sense at a different level. So the initial levels will look at really the pixels, the, the levels later will try to connect you of those pixels together and see does it look like a curve or does it look like a, a person's eye or something like that, and then it starts to connect more and more, and later and later it starts to kind of form a bigger picture of so to say, like, or is it a dog or a cat or a boat, just to give an example. And I've kind of really simplified this picture, uh, but there's a lot more that goes on. Uh, but again, I mean, I want to stress this, this technology, I mean, the AI or artificial intelligence community is pretty open and collaborative. So whether people are working in Google or Facebook or they're sharing a lot of this because what everybody has realized that uh, the, the, the technology is pretty core, 
but what's different is when you apply it on the data that you own. So data that Facebook has, Google has, the data that we are getting, it's more important to fine tune these for your own data. So the technology is state of the art, it's pretty collaborative uh, community how we are kind of getting. So there's a lot of pre-trained models trained on millions and billions of images uh, which is kind of making sense of the data, but then the key is to fine tune it for social use cases, apply it to the relevant images that our users care, and then make it you, um, in a much more comprehensive way, like in a fully integrated within our current solution. So what do we use it for? So we started with brand logos, but then I think as we started kind of using, applying this technology and brand logos, we saw there's a lot of requests on uh, kind of events, right? So the event mascots and all those things. So if it's Olympics, people want to know about uh, that there's uh, a mascot for each Olympics, and uh, or if it's uh, any other event, you want to kind of train up for that. So it's much more than brand logos. Then the other we kind of going into is objects. So what's kind of more than the, uh, the logos is what else is there in the pictures? And is it kind of for cats and dogs and bottles, buses, cars? And we are starting kind of with a set of objects that we have found are more frequently found uh, in the brand logos uh, in the pictures that our users care for. So we're kind of focused on that. Rather than saying like, oh, we got everything else, uh, like lots of big list of objects that work uh, okay, we want to focus on objects that kind of uh, are much more frequently found in pictures of our, uh, our that the users care about. Then is uh, faces. So this is kind of to do with uh, if there are p people in, in the picture, where the face is, and then on top of that, what's the emotion? And we're starting with very simple, so sad, happy, and neutral. Uh, the other emotions are pretty tricky to actually get, and most of the time on social, you, I mean, you can guess, like, uh, people post happy pictures. So, uh, but we do have where you can actually very quickly kind of filter down to, oh, uh, this picture has faces and happy faces. So. Uh, so that's the next. And then another is to identify uh, text in the images. So the idea was when we started, uh, the, okay, there are uh, picture, people are sharing pictures, and in there there could be text. And this is when memes get shared. So they generally include some sort of a text above and below. So that's how we kind of started off on that. But then later we found people are sharing concert tickets. Right? They'll say, oh, I'm so excited, I'm going to Super Bowl, and they'll share that. It will have a brand pic logo in there. Uh, or people will take some old news clippings from somewhere and say, like, oh, look, uh, a certain brand used to have X ingredient like 50 years back, right? And those things will go viral. So uh, we, as we start to see the data, we kind of start to apply this technology in multiple ways, right? Start with it memes, but now we're kind of finding it like people are sharing many other pictures with text in it that can be useful. Then is the overall scene, right? This is kind of ties it to the moment of consumption where the brand is being, uh, so if people are taking pictures of uh, Coca-Cola on a beach or is it an, uh, if there's a sponsorship of an event, is it in a stadium? Uh, so those kind of things is important. So again, we are kind of going with set of scenes that we think is much more relevant for our users. And then lastly, there's more things in the roadmap that we are kind of working towards. One of the things that we have seen in social, what happens is there's a lot of duplicates, like people share, retweet, and all of those, and you want to combine kind of all these images into kind of group them very quickly together. Uh, whether it's exact duplicate images or somewhat similar, maybe somebody has just cropped the image. So we're looking into that kind of a thing. So uh, that can help to either group it all together or actually even find where this, this thing started going viral, right? When was it first shared? So that kind of summarizes how we are applying this technology, right? So you could see uh, from logos, objects, faces and emotions, text in the images and scenes, and then kind of going more and more, like as we learn from our users, um, duplicates is one thing that's coming up and we want to work on those. So that, with that, and then what's 
where do we apply this, right? What's the data coverage looks like? So right now we are applying it on images we are getting from Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And we are roughly right now capturing around five to six million of images per day for our users, which are relevant to our users, after processing some hundreds of millions of posts per day. So that's kind of the coverage looks like. We are looking to, um, in future, kind of applying it to blogs and news images uh, if, there is, uh, if our users are interested in that, because often there could be a news story that people would have negative news story about certain things. They won't mention the brand, but they'll put a picture of the brand uh, right there. So those kind of things can be captured if you're looking at both the image and the text. Uh, then let's go through some of the use cases, how our brands are actually, or uh, our users, brands and agencies are actually using this. So one of the top one we have seen is events and sponsorship measurement. And this is where both that we kind of fine tune and, uh, and, and train a logo that our uh, customers need. So if there is a sponsorship or an event which has a special mascot or a logo, uh, we can actually train on that. So that's one key thing. The, the second is things like when we start to layer it. So events happen in a location. So if, if, if uh, it's happening in a stadium, if you could draw a geofence, we'll allow you to draw a geofence, capture all the images from that location, and then apply the logos on it and see what's coming directly from the venue where the event is happening. So that's why it's key that we can train it and as well as we, you, we can apply it, uh, layer it with all the other functionality in the system. Another is the moment of uh, consumption. I showed you like how looking at the scenes, you can actually very quickly get to whether it's beaches or the scenes or uh, downtown or some other place. Um, the next one is about the user-generated content, the campaign ideation. That's a big use case where kind of seeing how your brand is being shared, uh, what kind of pictures are being taken, or it could be brand or could be category searches. Like when people talk about, let's say, cocktails, what kind of and how do they actually share the pictures to get some idea. Like if you are putting out an image, uh, maybe it needs to be kind of more uh, – uh, more look more organic, right, or not just made up. So to get those kind of ideas, it really helps to very quickly create a, a topic, filter down to some images. Another is the brand share voice, right? So, I mean, keyword is key, right? I mean, till now you've been doing, oh, I just want to look at within this category, um, what's my share of voice looking at the mentions in keyword. But often in places like Instagram, if let's say uh, your liquor brand, you're putting hashtag cocktails is your um, uh, is is the category. Let's say so in cocktails, you want to see what are the brands being shared. So guess what? On a Instagram, people would say hashtag cocktail, but would not mention any of the brands. But they'll have have a picture of the drink and and some ingredients. So that's where it becomes key. Like if you want to get a very accurate, precise. Uh, share why is you need both keyword and the visual in certain categories and mainly with with it kind of the Instagram where people are not putting in the brand names Then partners and influencer engagement is another one where what are your influencers actually sharing in the pictures? Uh, does it include your brand or not include your brand? They most often may not even mention the brand uh, and then the last one is the risk management where again we have kind of learned uh, over time, like there are two kinds of things, right? Like one is in, a negative image gets shared, goes viral, you want to know about that. But the other was kind of interesting when we kind of started playing with the technology is often anything that we match with a little bit of a low confidence look like examples of logo infringement. So somebody took the logo, morphed it in a little way. So one of the examples, I don't know if, you, if it's visible, was uh, there was like a, some tour company in Mexico that the logo looks like Coca-Cola. So when we turn on our system, it's like, okay, let me find all the Coca-Cola mentions, and one of this came up, and it was kind of an interesting finding that you could actually even use to find images are being uh, kind of your logo is kind of being infringed upon, uh, that kind of a thing, not just finding the viral 
uh, images. So that kind of summarizes um, the list of use cases. Let me just very quickly jump into a demo. Let me screen share. All right. I'm guessing you should be able to see the screen right now. Yes, I can see your screen. All right, perfect. So let me quickly jump into one of the examples. So Summer Olympics, right? So this was in 2016, um, the Olympics in Rio, right? So this is one of the sponsorship event use case. So if you see, I mean, the pictures, I mean, one was, so while it's loading, so one was, yeah, of the, the typical Olympic rings, right? Those rings is one of the things. But then uh, another one was to uh, the Rio 2016 mascot itself, right? To get the precise coverage, the, the, you need to actually train on both, right? So if you look at it, this is, yes, it's just the Olympic rings here. Uh, but if you start to kind of go into... Uh, there's a mascot that was special for the Rio 2016, right? So we needed to actually kind of go and expand into that. So that's kind of one, uh, one of the things. Then you could layer it with other analysis. So you could actually apply all of the, uh, the, the amazing list of kind of the filters that you can actually use, but let's just apply another logo on top of that, right? So you could just say, like, you know what, I just want to look at Coca-Cola, and with what precision, and you just apply, and then it filters down to within Olympics, wherever Coca-Cola was being mentioned, or in, not mentioned in the text, but actually being shown with the picture. So you can see Olympics, Coca-Cola, right? So it's somewhere here. I mean, you would just kind of see like a little bit, very small, you can still see that. But another thing I wanna highlight is, let's look at a few other places. Right, so look at that. I mean, here images can be kind of on a curved surface, on some other, it's rotated. All of those, that's what happens in social data, right? Like, they are partial images. It's being chopped off from there. We still need to capture. There are examples where kind of they're at the back. Uh, they may not be in focus, right? or it's kind of on a bottle. So this is what I mean when kind of we need to kind of train it on social pictures. Like it's not just a brand being shown on one, uh, a poster or an image, but it could be in a social context. It could be just in the background somewhere. Uh, and our technology can actually pick all of that up. So that's one, right? So let's look at another one, which is, let's look at Coca-Cola. So we have been capturing that um, to look into not the logo. So let's say we're collecting all the images with Coca-Cola in it. Then what is the other, uh, the context? As we talked about uh, kind of getting to the objects around to get some content ideation use cases, like what are other objects being shown here, right? So typically with Coca-Cola, you would find bottle and cup. That's the most obvious. People share their picture person. Kind of that makes uh these are the obvious big ones, right? So that makes sense. But then you want to know, let's look at, I don't know why wine glass is showing up, right? I mean, that's, that's kind of an interesting insight that there's a lot of places where you do have Coca-Cola and a wine glass. So that just gives you kind of try to, if you start looking into the objects for kind of ideating, finding unique insights. This is pretty useful to kind of summarize all the images that are being matching where your logo is being found. And in addition, what we're kind of expanding into is that you don't even need to have the logo. You could just kind of put in a keyword search or something and see, I want to just look at hashtag, let's say, I don't know, back to school or hashtag cocktails and then summarize everything. 
So objects is one. Then scenes is where we talked about the moments of consumption, right? So this Coca-Cola, it tends to be kind of a big sponsor in various events. So you see stadium, soccer field, these kind of things kind of come up pretty often. But again, as I mentioned, Coca-Cola is somewhere in the background. We are capturing it. It's not completely visible. It still shows up there. So this is kind of, you can see like the, the obvious ones, the stadiums, but let's see some palace, right? Uh, that's interesting. Why is Coca-Cola showing up in a palace? So this is, again, where kind of a unique picture or a user-generated content can spark some insights, right? The palace, and there is a Coca-Cola truck right there because they're delivering to Hampton Court Palace. So that these kind of unique insights can jump off. Like once you start to see the summary in front of you, right, like where's the objects and scenes, and uh, when we try to summarize these millions of images with these kind of concepts. Emotions is another one. This is, I would again say, like social generally tends to be kind of more happy. So happy is big and neutral is, is kind of the obvious ones, but sad is there are a few places where you see that. But it's still kind of, I would say, this is work in progress, right? But it's, it's a quick way to get to, I just want to see lots of pictures of happy people using my brand, right? So that, that's where you could kind of use that. Another one, the big one, is the logos. Like, what other logos are being shared? Uh, that's an interesting kind of insight you want to see. So if it's Coca-Cola, definitely you're seeing that. But another thing I want to mention here is you can see how the different versions of it, right? So I can just go find, uh, let's see if there's different versions of Coca-Cola China, right? This is where when we say that we kind of cater it to kind of our brands or our users, like if you're a global brand, it's not like just two images you can train and say that, oh, we got all your logos. This is, again, a Coca-Cola, but it's in China, right? So you need to kind of know all of those and train all of those. Uh, but you could very quickly see that. You could see what other brands are being shared. So if it's Wendy's or Heineken, let's just click on Coca-Cola with Heineken in there. So this is interesting. So you could actually see all the uh, the brands. So if it's, if it's McDonald's, you can see some of the images with, if you know that they are partners, uh, you can see your partner images and how they are being shared. So that kind of summarizes, kind of I just quickly went through how you could have your, uh, uh, use the logos, uh, whether it's for sponsorship, uh, those kind of things, or for content ideation, how you can, the summary of the object scenes and emotions and other logos can actually help with uh, the, the use cases that we actually talked about. Uh, I think with that, I'm going to hand it back to Elvis uh, to wrap it up. Awesome. Thanks, Ranjit. Uh, let's see, let's make, get back to the slides. Cool. All right, so Ranjit just sort of ran you through um, sort of a quick and dirty uh, demo of how net-based AI-powered image analytics works. And I think it's really important um, to sort of highlight that this is something that's built into our platform. So all of these analyses are located on one platform. All of your data provided by images is going to add color as an additional source to the social data that you're already gathering. Um, so in summary, Image analytics is a powerful source of insight to inform strategic business decisions. You're gaining access to more posts than you were getting before when incorporating image analytics into your social listening. Um, and you're also getting a different audience. You're watching the audience transform and become more international and more female, giving you better, more holistic insights. Um, Image analysis is a core competency for social listening solutions. Um, it's something that's really important, and when you're evaluating a social listening solution, you want to make sure that there are certain functionalities uh, there around images. Um, and that with that holistic view, you're getting a view of customer conversation seamlessly into your workflow. You're not juggling between tools. You're going in, and you're getting all of the insights in one place and getting the right information. Uh, from it. Um, so, uh, as I promised, I want to leave time open for questions uh, from the audience. Uh, so, really excited um, to get some questions 
and have a conversation with you all. Uh, Kim, what's our first yes, question? Thank you so much. Thank you, Elvis. We do have a first question, and it's pertaining to the Formula One example that you guys covered. And <clears throat> the question is, would you pick up all of the brand logos on the shirts in the background? Yes, that's correct. So we'll pick up all the logos uh, that's there. So it's not just kind of pick one and then move on, no. Yeah, and I, I think as Ranji demonstrated, uh, social data, especially when it comes to images, it's, it's very unstructured and logos can appear on different surfaces at different angles and they can even be obscured. And uh, what we've found having built the technology in-house is we can tune the sensitivity to find obscured and partial logos. Um, or even infringing logos. So it, it's a very powerful technology um, that can pick out a lot of information from an image. Great. And to that point, Elvis, uh, the next question is, how large do the images need to be to be picked up? I mean, we saw that you know there, there are a wide range of sizes for logos that we can pick up. So it's, it's not something that needs to be larger front and center. Like if the logo is in the picture, we can find it. Yeah, and, and, and just to kind of add, it's sometimes even uh, when we are looking at certain images, we have problem finding, like where did it find the logo? And then we find it at some obscure location, like a little pixel on a big chart somewhere. Yeah. So it's, it's interesting that way that uh, it kind of surprises us sometimes how small the logos are. And Great. Thank you so much. And the next question is, <clears throat> Um, how can we input images into the application? Does it take it from the cloud? So currently what it does is it, um, when we're getting these social posts, uh, we get these uh, media URLs or media links in it and we just download it. So you don't need to do that work where downloading these from social. You just kind of tell us which hashtag and uh, and we'll do the work of downloading these images. Currently, right, I mean, we you. don't do where, yeah, currently we do not do where you give us the images, like, oh, I got these 1,500 images and you need to just process these. We just pick directly from the social images. Great, thanks for clarifying. So I think you addressed this with, with your Coke example, and but it's, the question is, does it recognize international text as well as other other English. So I think they're asking about other languages, like the, uh, like your example, the Coke can. So the, in logos, we don't train by language, right? So that that's, doesn't matter. So if that brand is, uh, uh, like in the Coke can, was different, right? So that, in in for logos, it doesn't matter, right? Logo for us is kind of a, it, it's a visual image, and like it, it has some corners and curves and those kind of things. We don't worry about text. Uh, but then extracting text from the images where people can type it in the memes. We have started with English and we are fine tuning it for other languages as our kind of uh, users need it. And the reason is often when we extract this, we need to kind of clean up the text. Like often there would, could be in extraction could be spelling mistakes. In logo, it doesn't matter. Like once it looks pretty much the same, we can say it's with high confidence it's that logo. Um, but with text, we need to clean up the text, and we have done that, the cleanup part for the English, but uh, for other languages, it's work in progress right now. Okay, great. Thank you. <clears throat> so regarding social, will this include any kind of platform, Pinterest, for instance, was not included on the slide? Can you cover where we pull the information from? So we get it from right now Twitter, uh, Facebook, and Instagram. So those are the networks we are covering. We are looking at um, going forward, uh, uh, see how we can actually handle YouTube, uh, whether it's some frames or whether it's the cover picture, so that's one. And the second is the pictures uh, in blogs and news is another kind of is on our roadmap. Uh, Great. Okay. Next question. We have a lot of questions here. Let's see. Um, uh, 
Uh, next question, will this ever evolve to capture images in digital video like Instagram stories in video or YouTube in a companion with text comments? So technically, I mean, it's the same technology. I mean, I would say we are ready. Uh, commercially, we need to kind of find uh, somebody uh, who's really interested in it. Because it, it comes down to just processing, right? We could process uh, every 10th frame or every 30th frame. Uh, it's the same technology. Uh, what we have found is these videos are long, the frames, if you want to get any kind of insights, uh, doing it at a scale of millions of videos is uh, commercially not viable when we, uh, for the use cases. But we are kind of still actively, I mean, we are looking to partner with someone to kind of do that. Uh, yeah, and, and that's one of the benefits of owning the technology and the roadmap is that when we have a partner, if there's like a specific use case that says, you know, this channel stories would be important to us, can you do that? Like we have the technology and we could work with a partner um, on that type of solution. And that, that's really sort of the benefit of, of when you do it integrated with a current platform rather than, than getting that functionality from a third party. Great. And just real quick, um, another question, can all brands benefit from in image analytics? Yes. Uh, when we went through and we were looking at Lyft uh, for brands and image analytics, I showed that 20.6% average Lyft number. Um, for, for all kinds of brands, you know, whether it's a product brand or if it's a service brand or, you know, if it's even B2B, um, there are more insights to be gained uh, from looking at images. Of course, you know, that depends on, on the visual weight of the brand. Some brands are very visual, so you're going to get a lot of impact from that. Um, but, you know, like languages or uh, images are the language of social media. So if you're a brand online, uh, you're definitely going to see a lift uh, from, from image analytics. Great. Thanks so much. Another question has come in. Um, can you target a particular social media influencer and look for logos? An example would be, can a brand monitor how often someone is displaying a logo? Yeah, yeah, and uh, that's one of the benefits of having our image analytics built in uh, to the NetBase platform. So NetBase as a platform already allows you to track and follow channels and pull in specific influencers or information, and then you can layer image analytics on top of that in order to find those logos. Um, so that's where you really start to see the power. Like having image analytics as a function by itself and saying, hey, we found these logos is really cool, but where it really becomes powerful and impactful uh, for people and brands is when you can start layering those analyses in order to answer specific questions like, am I getting my money's worth with this influencer? Are they sharing my brand enough? Are they displaying my logo properly? You know, um, are they doing mentions of my brand or logo that aren't tagged that I need to know about? We can do all of those um, in NetBase. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you've kind of answered this question, but I'm gonna, I'll just pitch it out to you anyway. Um, can you give an example of a case study or st um, strategy that was developed as a result of this powerful engine? Yeah, so we work really closely with customers. Uh, this is something that we've been doing uh, for years. So uh, Ranjit gave the example of the 2016 Olympics in Rio, uh, but this is something that we've also used at the most recent Olympics and something that brands like Visa and Coca-Cola are looking into, you know, sort of who's popular, what, it, what content is really resonating with the audience that's helping to get our logo in front of more people. Um, so you can, you can make tactical decisions as well as strategic decisions on what type of content you're sharing and on what channels you're sharing it on. And image analytics helps give you the data to understand how people are reacting to the visual side of the content, not just to necessarily, you know, the specific campaign hashtag or, or branded channel. Great, thank you. Another question, uh, do you get all the posts for a time period and then find images with logos? How do you filter the input data? 
So the input data, I mean, it depends on what our users are interested in. If they say that, oh, these are my hashtags or these are my channels, so that's how we first filter the data. And then uh, it's uh, whatever you're collecting based on your keywords and channels. So again, I mean, we kind of stressing that point that it's fully integrated with the, the system. So you define what data you want to pull in, and then we apply the image analytics on top of that. Yeah, and I think, Ranjit, that's a really important point. Um, when looking at image analytics, it's really important that you have an understanding of what you want to learn about from an image. I mean, we can just go in and say, you know, hey, I have a logo, and I want to see all of the dimensions of the logo at a high level, and we can summarize that. Uh, but it starts to become really useful uh, when you start to build it into a specific analysis or if you have a specific research question, you know, where are people consuming my brand, right? How many times does my logo show up in a coverage of an event? Those types of things gives you sort of more granular and more actionable data than sort of just that high level, I want to look at all, all mentions uh, sort of research. Right, and I mean, one other example here is, um, I would say, for example, you can put a hashtag and then say, uh, even answering a very simple question like, what's the most popular or most engaged image with this hashtag that contains my logo? Right, for that, you need to first pull in all that data for that hashtag, apply image analytics, you need to have the metrics assigned with it to kind of answer that simple question. So there's a lot in those kind of the simple use cases, and we need to kind of apply based on what you're interested in. That's where kind of the layering in of all the insights kind of helps. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Another question is, can you speak to how you analyze visual analytics in terms of the deliverables and what does the output look like beyond word clouds, et cetera? So I think we, we I showed kind of the objects and scenes within the word clouds. But uh, all the other analytics are there. So you could, you could say that, okay, find me all the images with this logo, but then summarize the demographics. Or then summarize for those images uh, um, the hashtags or what's trending in uh, terms in those. So image is one output. But I mean, think of this as all the other insights tied with those images as well, you can actually be where the geolocations of those uh, images are. Um, so, and then we are looking at more visualizations in, in terms of uh, the images itself. So starting with is the summary of the word cloud, uh, but we look into kind of other visualizations for just the images. Great, thank you so much for that. And um, another question is, you know, lots of posts have text mentions. Are there really that many mentions that include images? And I think you guys touched on this, and they just reiterate the, the answer to that. Yeah, yeah, we did. And, you know, depending on, on who you ask, you're going to get a different number. Um, we, we've looked at this for a lot of brands because it's something that we were curious about too, right? Like I think if you think about Instagram, as a network, which is very image heavy, right? Seven out of 10 hashtags on Instagram are actually branded. So if you're doing keyword or hashtag research now, you're getting about 70% of the data. Um, you know, so when we're looking at sort of brands broadly, like across categories, we found that on average, you're gonna get about a 20.6% lift in mentions. So there is a difference. It is measurable. Um, and when, when you do start looking into those posts particular, that extra 20%, you're going to find that they're more international and generally they're more female. Um, so if you're looking at text only, you are getting a good percentage of the conversation, but you're not getting all of it, and you're also missing out on potentially some important audiences. Um, and that, that's really one of the advantages of social analytics or image analytics on social is that you're, you're getting more data. It's not just that you're getting images and brand mentions, you're getting more of that audience data, you're getting different demographics, you're getting different geographies. And that when you're building a strategy 
or you're thinking tactically, how do I spend my money, where do I spend my money, who do I target, having images alongside your text analysis is going to be very important because it's going to kind of push you oftentimes in different directions than you're getting just from text. And just to add, uh, I mean, often the extra mentions is kind of you're looking for when you're, it's, it's a brand topic, let's say. But uh, a lot of time the image analysis is going to be useful when you just say start with uh, kind of an event or a category hashtag. Like let's say hashtag back to school, like one real example, and you just want to see how your logo gets shared in that category. So it's more hard, like once you've collected that, uh, what's in those images that are coming through non-branded hashtags as well. Okay, great. Thank you so much for your answers, guys. Looks like we're just about at the end of our time here, and we do have a bunch more questions to respond to, and we'll be more than happy to take those offline and get back to you. Um, thank you so much for your great response to our webinar, and thank you so much for attending today's webinar, Introducing Next Generation Artificial Intelligence for Image Analytics brought to you by NetBase. Um, if you do have additional questions beyond the ones that you've submitted, I see them right here for us. Thank you very much. Um, feel free to contact NetBase at info at netbase.com. And thank you so much for, to Elvis and Ranjit, and have a lovely day.